what is the geological, the, the traditional geological response, or is there a response to, to these seeming coincidences of, well, you got these slides over here, and you got these slides over here, and you got these mountains in the middle have been lopped off. Yeah, they, seem to, they all seem to date to around the same time, but it's all coincidence. Well, okay. We have a few, this, this is, now we're coming a little closer to our own time. This is, this is a study now from 2005. And this is the Spartel Bank, which, uh, let's pull this up here. All right, so here's the Straits of Gibraltar, the Strait of Gibraltar, which is what Plato called the Pillars of Heracles, right? And then you've got this square area here which is the, the study area. And this is almost due east of the Azores, right, in the Gulf of Cadiz, right? So here's what this study showed in this area right here, which of course would have been in the direct pathway of any tsunami emanating from the, the triple junction there of the Azores Plateau area. And this is, this is what, uh, this particular study is saying, it says numerous, and this appeared in the, 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 you know, the professional journal Geology, 2005, numerous geographical similarities exist between Plato's descriptions of Atlantis and a paleo island, Spartel, in the western straits of Gibraltar. The dialogues recount a catastrophic event that submerged the island circa 11.6 thousand years ago in a single day and night due to violent earthquakes and floods. This sudden destruction is consistent with a great earthquake greater than 8.5 on the Richter scale and a tsunami. As in the Gulf of Cadiz region in 17, 1755 when tsunami run-up heights reached 10 meters. So what they discovered here in that study area was an unusually thick turbidite dated at circa 12,000 years ago. Mm. So the limited dating we've got is certainly not inconsistent. Well, that paper like directly references Atl Plato's Atlantis basically. Yeah. And so, so yes, it does. And so the, uh, the title of this article, again, which appeared in the, you know, prestigious professional journal geology is destruction of Atlantis by a great earthquake and tsunami, a geological analysis of the Spartel bank hypothesis. Now, I don't necessarily agree with his conclusion that this island that was there, Spartel, was Atlantis, right? But it's, again, consistent with the idea that there would have been cataclysmic events that affected the Atlantic Ocean Basin and um, left their imprint on islands, on coastlines, and along the mid-Atlantic ridge itself. Did, did they yank his geologist card for, for mentioning Atlantis? In a, in a <laughs> no, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say that that's pretty, that's pretty amazing that uh, they have, you know, the guts to do that study. Yeah, that's study. Like cojones. <laughs> yeah, I agree, yeah. Because, um, I mean, they're still that. admitting that if, if even if it, if Plato was talking about that little island, they're sort of admitting that okay, there really the, is a the legend some, credence. Yeah, there there is some uh, historical precedent to the yeah. idea. At Whether least or the not Plato living there, yeah, they could tell the story. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I mean, okay. So what we've seen over over the last few episodes of this is that if we look at Plato's geography. Uh, it pretty much points directly to the area west of Strait of Gibraltar. And we find that there is plenty of evidence of sunken islands, of massive subsidence along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. We find evidence of catastrophic events, not only that might have happened at the end of the last ice age, but maybe episodic going back repeatedly, Twenty, like that one study that suggested every 25,000 years which is an interesting uh, period of time because think how close that is to the great year model of right. you mm -hmm. know, 25,920 years, mm -hmm. this idea that we've inherited from ancient cultures that there is a, a, a pulse of change that, that is associated with that particular periodicity.
In the early days of Atlantis research from the late 19th century up until the 1970s, most researchers put the location in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean in the area of the Azores Islands, which was considered to be the most consistent with Plato's geography as expressed in his two dialogues, Timaeus and Critias, and as expressed in the aforementioned quote. However, in the 1970s, a number of geologists set out to examine the plausibility of an Atlantic location for Atlantis and concluded that there was no evidence for any sizable sunken landmass that could ever have satisfied Plato's criteria and therefore dismissed his account as mere fable, or perhaps a political allegory, but not a real place. In the aftermath of this declaration of implausibility for a mid-Atlantic location by scientific authorities, most researchers then looked elsewhere, finding similarities in literally dozens of other locations, as I explained, but only after abandoning or altering Plato's precise description and details. With so many conflicting interpretations, a serious researcher might conclude that the problem is hopelessly intractable and not worthy of scientific scrutiny. On the other hand, I would suggest that the scientific dismissal of a mid-Atlantic location was premature, and the subsequent tangents embarked upon by researchers only muddied the waters and threw the quest for Atlantis, if it existed, off track. I am arguing that it is time to go back to the source and examine to what extent Plato's precise details might be supported or refuted by modern scientific knowledge. I have covered much of this material in my Cosmographia podcasts, but there is more to be said. And the goal with this live stream is to provide a succinct and condensed interpretation of Plato's remarkable story in the light of modern scientific knowledge, and perhaps to lay the groundwork for an upcoming expedition. <laughs>